we're talking a lot about hormones and, yeah. and drugs. I want to turn to Eric because one other aspect of neuroendocrine tumors that is really important is whether patients are candidates for surgery. Uh, and last time I checked, surgery was the only way to cure these patients. One question for you is how do, how do surgeons work as, as part of the team? Uh, and how important is it for patients to see a surgeon, an endocrinologist, a medical oncologist? It's something that can be really confusing sometimes. No, that's exactly right, Matt. Actually, you know, surgery is one tool of many when it comes to taking care of these patients. And it just kind of highlights the importance of having a multidisciplinary team, as you just mentioned. Because these patients can suffer from lots of different symptoms, from lots of different causes. So surgery, you know, we always say cut is the cure. But unfortunately, neuroendocrine tumors have a very high metastatic and recurrence rate. So we do what we can. But um, having the surgeon on board with the radiologist, with the medical oncologist, with the endocrinologist, and the whole team is absolutely vitally important. And the other thing to keep in mind, too, is you always want to have the surgeon involved because there, there may be some point when another lesion comes up, like Dr. Yao described previously, we can still be treated. And we have more and more tools for surgery, and we're doing it much more safely now. So it may be you may have disease in the neck, which requires some surgery, or in the liver, or maybe in the bone. And so having another pair of eyes that can perform a procedure for you or have an interventionalist with you is a very important tool to have when it comes to caring for these patients. So another issue that comes up, a, a lot of surgeons are used to seeing pancreatic adenocarcinoma or metastatic colon cancer. Neuronal tumors are a little different. Uh, they're more indolent. How does the surgical thinking sh differ or oh. shift compared to some of these other malignancies? That are your criteria different? Absolutely correct, yeah. And so it, it really is a difference in philosophy because it's a difference of biology, right? You know, we, uh, we are aggressive about adenocarcinomas to try to remove them. We, are, we shy away when there's metastatic disease, which is actually very different from neuroendocrine. Frequently, we'll have very small tumors that turn into uh, with a very bulky disease. But these patients, even in the setting of stage four disease in the bone, in the liver, and elsewhere, can still live a very long time. So the question is, how do we treat them and make their quality of life good? How do we extend their survival? And we can do that not only with your medications, with your hormones, but with my surgical techniques also. So if a patient, for example, has a blocked intestine, you can't live with that. So you have to have it surgically removed. If you have someone, for example, who has lots of liver lesions, and maybe it's not so simple to remove, you know, to, to treat them with your medications, perhaps I can remove most of them, and then you can help treat the smaller ones later on. We have, you know, we have many symptoms in which patients either have hormone secretion, and so we do something called debulking surgery, which is very valuable. And the great thing about surgery and anesthesia is it's become so safe nowadays that uh, we can use it over and over and over again. Um, one thing we do encourage frequently, though, is that, you, um, that the patients and the physicians think about the hormonal aspects of these tumors. Because during surgery, if a patient, for example, has a high tumor load and secretes a lot of hormone, they can have, unfortunately, um, anesthesia and surgical complications, which we frequently call carcinoid crisis. So it's something to be aware of and certainly nice to have um, people with experience and expertise doing those procedures. So it's, there, there are some situations where uh, a general surgeon might be perfectly appropriate for some of these patients, but they are different in many ways. And, and I think what you're saying is that in many cases, patients may benefit from getting referred in to a, a, someone who sees a lot of these patients, uh, whether it's a specialist uh, at an academic center or otherwise. Absolutely. 